about hello my dear students i hope you all have been doing well today i am delivering you lecture number 22 and uh, this lecture is about uh, aldehyde in this lecture we are going to study about the general method of preparation of aldehydes what are the identification test of aldehyde by which we can identify aldehyde in our laboratory and what are the pharmaceutical and other applications of aldehyde so starting from the synthesis of aldehyde and uh, there are several methods for uh, synthesis of aldehydes and in fact uh, there are several methods for the synthesis of all other organic compound that I, uh, that i have been discussed with you till now but uh, in uh, for your ease or in this lecture i will just um uh, discuss uh, with you all those uh, um, uh, method of uh, preparation of aldehyde um, uh, that are um, for you to easy to remember and uh, in my all uh, previous lecture i uh, have only discussed all those method for you that are important all those method of synthesis of the organic compound for example when uh, i deliver you lecture about the amines uh, so i discuss a, a few methods of preparation that are uh, important uh, most important method and you can easily remember so as uh, similarly in this lecture i will discuss with you uh, only those method of preparation of aldehyde uh, those you can easily remember and you can uh, and they, they, these are most important method for synthesis so um, and before starting the uh, uh, method of synthesis of aldehyde i just make you remember again how you can um, uh, keep remember the method of uh, preparation of any or organic molecule or uh, for example in this lecture as we are uh, see uh, discussing the method of preparation or method of synthesis of aldehyde so i will give you the uh, finger tips how you can keep remember uh, of the uh, method of preparation so you have to first uh, you have to um, remember the name uh, of the reaction for example here is zinki reaction so you have to remember that uh, uh, you uh, synthesize aldehyde you learn to synthesize aldehyde by which reaction zinki reaction it is a uh, uh, name of a scientist so by this means a name or by this i they, although there were several method uh, of aldehyde synthesis by but i just pick up all those method they are on uh, they are on the name of scientist or they are having some unique name so you can easily remember uh, the method of synthesis by the scientist name or by the their unique name so first uh, uh, first method means first uh, uh, tip how you can uh, remember the method of preparation of uh, any organic molecule or aldehyde first you have to remember the name of the reaction so you have to keep um, uh, means uh, uh, imagine that uh, you use the zinc reaction for uh, aldehyde you use geminal uh, synthesis for ketone and so on and uh, second tip is that you have to keep remember if you are going to synthesize aldehyde so what was uh, the uh, reactant means there were a reactant who that react with some other reactant or uh, in the presence of uh, some uh, conditions and give you aldehyde so second tip is you have to keep remember what was the reactant and third tip is you have to remember that was wa what was the uh, what uh, what uh, means what uh, were be, uh, be the condition of reaction for example either you use any catalyst in the reaction and uh, you use uh, you proceed the reaction in the presence of water or any other chemical or any other reagent any other dye so if you were be uh, using any catalyst or any other reagent in the reaction so you will found uh, the that catalyst or reagent to be written on this arrow so you have to uh, this is the third tip 
of uh, uh, keeping remember how you keep remember what reaction you use for what compound synthesis so if uh, you are uh, first thing is that you have to keep the uh, remember the name of the reaction second you have to keep remember what was the uh, reagent what was the reactant and uh, um, uh, third one is you have to keep remember what was the uh, what were the reagent in the reaction uh, either there were be any catalyst or, or um, any other reagent and the uh, fourth one is you have to keep remember that um, what condition you use for the reaction means either you you are you are uh, proceeding the reaction in the presence of temperature or uh, or uh, any other uh, environmental condition so if there is if the uh, temperature you uh, would be uh, uh, if the reaction would be temperature sensitive so you will uh, find uh, the temperature on that the reaction particularly proceed on this arrow so if you will find find any uh, means on this arrow any temperature is written here so you have to remember this so uh, means me or any other teacher would ask you if you would ask you that what was the temperature uh, of that reaction so you have to understand uh, remember this so these are the some in fingertip uh, uh, means uh, fingertips uh, important things that you have to keep remember so now we are going to uh, uh, study how we can synthesize aldehyde from zinc reaction this reaction is name on the uh, name of a scientist and uh, in this reaction we react pyridine uh, uh, with a secondary amines and uh, in the presence of water so if when we react a pyridine with the uh, uh, secondary amine in the presence of water what we get we get an aldehyde as a product or an amine also so if you have find any uh, means uh, thing that is written here uh, with the plus sign so it means that with the uh, production of your uh, means desired product uh, you also having a side uh, product in your reaction means a secondary product in your reaction but, but you don't uh, need to be worry about that you just have to keep remember your desired product what is your desired product in this synthesis in this reaction an aldehyde because we are uh, read, uh, me, we, we are discussing these reaction under the heading of aldehyde so you have to keep remember that which reactant we use for the uh, production of aldehyde so what uh, what was the reaction here uh, reactant here here was a pyridine so what did you do with this pyridine you react this pyridine with a secondary amine in the presence of water so as a result you get an aldehyde just you have to keep remember this thing and nothing else and i will explain you what is the secondary amine secondary amine you know uh, amine that are having um, um, an amine that are having uh, a nitrogen group that is attached with two other alkyl groups so you are having here a nitrogen nitrogen atom and it is having attached with two other r group that may be hydrocarbon or alkyl alkyl means alkyl or hydrocarbon so and uh, oh, what is uh, uh, and how this is an aldehyde i have already uh, explained you in my lecture number uh, aldehyde 1 uh, that uh, uh, what are aldehyde aldehyde are the organic molecule or organic compound that are having c double bond o group and this uh, group uh, and the carbon atom of this group would be attached with one alkyl group and other must be hydrogen atom means if a carbonyl group c double bond o group attach with one hydrogen and one alkyl group so it would be an aldehyde so you ha i have explained you clearly that how you can uh, 
you you can produce um, aldehyde from a zincy reaction and it is so much easy you don't need to be worry about the uh, means the reaction that it is written here you know don't need to be practice the this reaction you just have to keep remember that how we can produce aldehyde from a zincy reaction what you have to do you have to take a pyridine you have to react this pyridine with a secondary amine and uh, in the presence of water so you will get uh, an aldehyde so the next reaction is the neph reaction and it is also based on the name of a scientist and what is the neph reaction it is a an organic reaction and uh, what happened in this reaction how you get aldehyde by this reaction in this reaction what you uh, what you will use as a reactant nitroalkene so when you um, hydrolyze this nitroalkene what uh, you will get you will get an aldehyde or a ketone so you have to just re remember that you can also produce or synthesize aldehyde by NAF reaction and what you have to do in this NAF reaction you just have to take an, a, a, a nitroalkane and you have to hydrolyze this nitroalkane so what you will get you will get this aldehyde or ketone you don't need to be worried by this uh, uh, means uh, so complicated reaction or uh, so complicated uh, structures. You just have to keep remember that in a NAF, a NAF reaction is a method of preparation of aldehyde and in NAF reaction you hydrolyze a nitroalkane and this hydrolysis of this nitroalkane produce an aldehyde or ketone or this NAF, NAF, NAF reaction you can also use if I and other teacher will ask you about uh, what is the method of synthesis of uh, uh, ketone so you can also use this NAF reaction because this NAF reaction by this NAF reaction you can produce both aldehyde or ketone by the hydrolysis of nitroalkane so this was the NAF reaction and the th third reaction was stiffen aldehyde synthesis. This reaction is also named on the scientist and in this reaction how you produce aldehyde what is the reactant? The reactant is the nitrile. In this reaction by stiffen aldehyde synthesis in this reaction and in this method you, you produce an aldehyde by the nitriles and what are nitriles nitriles are the compound that are having r c triple bond n group so these are the nitrile you can get hydro uh, you can get an aldehyde from this nitrile and this method is uh, named on the basis of stefan that uh, describe or that invented this reaction and here you can see what are uh, aldehyde that uh, you are having r c double bond O that is uh, having attached with an alkyl group and other is a hydrogen atom. So the other reaction is uh, a rosin mud re reduction. So by the rosin mud reduction you can also produce aldehyde. So what is the reactant in this reaction and how you can produce aldehyde by rosin mud reduction. Uh, you can in this uh, in this uh, method an an acyl chloride what is an acyl chloride a chloride that is attached with an acyl group he, this is the acyl group c double bond o and r this is an acyl group and here a chloride is attached so it is a acyl chloride so when you add up hydrogen in this acyl chloride you will get an an aldehyde so you uh, what is the reduction reduction is the addition of a hydrogen so on the basis that we are adding here a hydrogen in an acyl chloride and getting an aldehyde so due to this uh, we name this reaction as reduction rosin mud reduction the method who disc, uh, described by the scientist rosin mud so 
this is uh, this was the these are the these were the method of synthesis of an uh, of aldehyde you can easily uh, keep remember on your fingertip that how we can produce aldehyde so now we are going to discuss about the identification of aldehyde how we can identify aldehyde in our laboratory so uh, we can identify the aldehyde group in any organic compound by using all three spectroscopic uh, method that is the ir spectroscopy proton nmr uh, by the proton and uh, uh, proton nmr nucleic mag nu nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy and by uh, by the c13 nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy these are the method nmr nmr hyd proton nmr and c13 nmr these are both are the nuclear mag magnetic uh, resonance spectroscopy and by this method we identify a uh, means uh, uh, compound or we uh, develop the structure of a compound or we identify a compound on the basis of their rotation of the electron around the nuclei so here is proton nmr here uh, we identify the compound or the uh, organic uh, functional group or the functional group in a compound by using uh, the proton and yeah, here by the c13 nmr uh, carbon 13 that is an isotope so what we just have to keep remember uh, in this section you just have to keep in remember that how you could identify aldehyde in your lab you have to remember that you can identify aldehyde in your lab by spectroscopic technique and one is the ir infrared spectroscopy one is the proton NMR spectroscopy and one is the C13 NMR nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. So by these three techniques you can identify aldehyde in your lab and for more explanation you should also have to remember that at what uh, wavelength you can identify uh, aldehyde group or aldehyde compound or the functional group of aldehyde by uh, in your lab by the ir spectra so uh, ir is the infrared spectroscopy that is uh, importantly or particularly uh, identify the functional group in the organic molecule so if you are having an organic molecule and you you are having a sample of an organic molecule that is unknown to you you don't know that what is inside in the sample either the sample is containing the amine either the sample is com com containing the ketone you don't know anything and you are having this sample you don't know that either it is uh, containing aldehyde ketone amine or any other organic molecule so what you have to do you have to have this sample you have have to run the experiment in infrared spectroscopic uh, uh, spectrophotometer and what this spectrometer will do this spectrophotometer uh, will develop a spectra that i have already discussed with you in other different lectures this spectra will uh, uh, explain you at what a web wavelength you are having the functional group if you are having a functional group at or you are having a peak at 700 nanometers so this peak correspond to the aldehyde compound because the functional group of the aldehyde particularly identify at 1700 uh, centimeter in ir spectroscopy so you also have to understand uh, remember this uh, this uh, wavelength that at what wavelength uh, you will be find out the aldehyde in ir spectroscopy and uh, in the proton in the proton nmr uh, uh, what you will do uh, the hydrogen formyl hydrogen center uh, of the aldehyde absorb at 9.5 to 10 and then uh, in the uh, c13 nmr you have to keep just re remember that you will be 
aldehyde and ketone give a signal at 190 and 205 so what is the conclusion of this section of the identification of aldehyde how we can uh, how you can identify aldehyde in uh, laboratory by the ir spectroscopy by proton nmr by c13 nmr and you have to just remember this peak that in ir spectroscopy you identify aldehyde at 1700 cm in proton nmr uh, aldehyde for mild hydrogen absorb at 9.5 to 10 and then c13 nmr the ketone and aldehyde both can gives uh, their signal or their peak at 190 to 205 wavelength so now we are going to discuss about the uses of aldehyde aldehyde are um very good polymerization polymerizing agent means they can easily polymerize so their combination with other type of molecule produces the so called aldehyde condensation polymer so which have been used in plastic such as bakelite and in the laminate table top material formica so you all know that uh, we have the formica on our table or our side tables uh, so the, this uh, this material can be developed by the condensation of aldehyde with other polymer and aldehyde are also useful as a solvent and perfume ingredient such as intermediate in the production of dye and pharmaceutical aldehyde can be used in different dyes in for, uh, perfumes or various other pharmaceutical one of the important uh, um, biologically active aldehyde is vitamin a so vitamin a is a uh, one of the most uh, you are uh, you know very well that uh, vitamin a is having three different form one is retinol form one is retinal form and one is retinoic acid form so one is the acidic form and one is the aldehydic form so uh, uh these all the form these all form of vitamins are from as retinoids and the retinal form is an alcohol form of uh, uh, vitamin a and the retinal is the aldehyde form of vitamin a and the retinoic acid is the acidic form of vitamin a so you can see here three forms of vitamin a and uh, retinal is the alcoholic form and uh, retinol is the alcoholic form as the name is indicating retinol where uh, you are having nol it is uh, mean that you are having alcohol in your compound and you can see there alcohol what is alcohol oh o the compound that is having oh group it is alcohol so you can see here here is oh so it is the it, it, it is this is the structure of vitamin a if the vitamin a is having oh at the end so what is what is this it this is the alcoholic form of vitamin a that is the retinol and you can see here if the if the vitamin a having c double bond o group that is attached to one of the hydrogen and one of the r group that is what is this this is an aldehyde by the definition of aldehydic compound as i have previously explained you that what are aldehyde aldehyde are the compound that are having c double bond o group and this c is attached with one of the r group and one must be the hydrogen atom so you can see here that in the case of this structure of vitamin a you are having a c double bond o group and this c is attached to one hydrogen and one is the r group and what is this r group r group is the alkyl group that is the structure of vitamin a reminder structure so the, the, due to the having of this uh, this this group Uh, this aldehyde group or uh, c double bond o group this uh, vitamin a is a retinal it is an aldehydic form of vitamin a and third is the uh, 
retinoic acid that is the acidic form of vitamin a you can see here what is the acid c double o c o o h if you are having c o o h group in any organic compound this c o o h group is an acidic group so uh, it is the compound will be then acidic in nature or acidic so it is you are having coh group it is acidic form of vitamin a it is the aldehydic form of vitamin a because the functional group that, that you are having is the, an aldehydic group or c double bond o group that is attached with one hydrogen and one uh, uh, alkyl radical and you are having another form of vitamin a that is retinol that is um that is alcoholic group or hydroxyl group so here is are the this is the retinol is the important why uh, we, uh, the retinol is important for us because it is a aldehyde group in this lecture vitamin vitamin a retinol retinal form of vitamin a is an aldehyde so you can if i or any other teacher will ask you about the example of aldehyde by biolo uh, biologically active example of aldehyde so you can say that retinal is an an uh, an aldehyde that is biologically active form of vitamin a and it is important aldehyde so the, here uh, we can see that the what are the difference between aldehyde and ketone as we have already covered the lecture on ketone and we are now in this lecture we are uh, uh, we have covered the uh, topic of aldehyde so now important thing is that we can understand what is the difference between aldehyde and ketone so the aldehyde uh, have the form of rcho group and the ketone have r c o r group and i have well explained you this difference in my uh, previous lecture or previous slide of this lecture so what will be the aldehyde the compound organic compound that are having a c uh, c a carbon that is attached with cho that is attached with ho and one will be the r or you can say a compound that is having carbon that is attached with double bond with the oxygen and this carbon is having one h and one r and in case of ketone the carbon that is attached with oxygen with double bond this carbon with will be attached with two r okay and then other difference is that aldehyde are more reactive than ketone aldehyde undergo oxidation and forming carboxylic acid however ketone cannot be oxidized without breaking the carbon chain and aldehyde always occur at the end of the carbon chain and ketone always occur in the middle of the chain it is very much important difference and you can easily identify if i will give you two uh, one example um uh, one is structure and i will say you differentiate if uh, uh, if this is an aldehyde or ketone so you have to see that the functional group that is c double bond o group is present at the end of the either present at the end of the structure or at the middle of the structure so if the c double bond o group would be present at the end of the structure so it would be aldehyde but if c double bond o group would be present in the middle of the structure it would be uh, ketone and uh, aldehyde usually found in volatile compound and ketone uh, usually found in the sugars so students these are the reference my laptop battery is going to down so in this lecture i have uh, finished here and then uh, these are the reference book you can also understand from these books and thank you very much and take care allah hafiz